Well, I'm in the kitchen this afternoon. I was getting ready to go to the grocery and pick up a few things. Went in the bathroom to brush my teeth first. Have you ever noticed when you're using your toothpaste and it gets down low and you pinch the ends of it and you push, 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 getting that last bit of toothpaste? You can't throw away that tube till you get that last bit of toothpaste. Well, I've done that. Each day, I think this is the last time I'll be able to get any toothpaste out of this tube. When I finish, I think, oh, I can't throw it away yet. I've been doing that for two weeks now. Still getting enough toothpaste out for one more brushing. Now, it isn't that I've don't have a replacement for the toothpaste. I do, because every time I go to the dentist, they give me a new tube. And I've been using Sensodyne lately. Been going to the dentist rather often too, which means I've got a good supply of toothpaste. So having told that, I just put on a, a pot of uh, potatoes. I decided I wanted some potato salad. Now, everybody knows good potato salad when they eat it. Everybody has the best recipe. But in my family, I have the best recipe. Been using it since I was in high school. My mother always let me make the potato salad on weekends. If we had a picnic, a group from school, whatever, they'd always say, let Pat make the potato salad. Now, what can be so great about Pat potato salad? Nothing really, but I'm going to show you how I make it, and it is like meatloaf. Every time you make it, it may taste different. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's delicious, Sometimes you want to feed it to the dog. That's just how potato salad and meatloaf are. And I'm sure you're well aware of that. So, I've already boiled my potatoes. And first thing I want to tell you about making potato salad is the kind of potatoes you use. I had always used Idaho potatoes growing up, but in the last few years they've come up with new potatoes of all kinds that I'd never heard of. And <clears throat> what I learned was the best potatoes you can use for making potato salad are the little red potatoes. They don't uh, cook up and get mushy. Idaho potatoes will get soft and if you stir them while they're hot, they get like, you'll end up with it. Um, mashed potatoes salad what you'll end up with so I started using the red potatoes today I didn't have any red potatoes so I used the russet potatoes I think they're going to be okay because uh, after I cooked them I let them set and cool that's the important factor in making potato salad you've got to let your potatoes cool before you start mixing them now I put them in my pretty little red pot that I bought not long ago. You've seen it before. Here are my tato potatoes. I cut them up in chunks. Now I don't like great big chunks. I just, I, let's just call these medium size. And they cool down. They were cool before I started cutting them. I wanted everything ready. I'm not going to peel carrots. I'm not going to cut celery. I'm not going to slice onions. It's already done. And eggs are on the stove right now boiling. We're going to have eggs in our potato salad. We're going to have potatoes, carrots, green pepper, onion, celery, a little bit of uh, sweet pickles and eggs. Then you're going to add, of course, salt, pepper if you want it, and 
a little bit of mustard, just enough mustard to give it a little color. I don't like tart, so I don't put much pickle and I don't put much mustard because I don't like the tart taste. You can use your own judgment about how you like your potato salad, but this is my recipe. And with a little bit of mustard, it gives it more color along with the yolk of the eggs. Uh, your brand of mayonnaise doesn't matter. I'll tell you the brands I use. I use the one that Kroger gives me coupons for about once every three months. You can get a free big jar of either Kraft or Hellman's mayonnaise. Well, with the price of mayonnaise today, you better believe I'm going to use those coupons. I even have a, a shelf of, of Hellman's and Kraft mayonnaise that I use because I use a lot of mayonnaise in my cooking. Now, we'll get started. I've got the potatoes here. I'll show you. I've already cut up my celery. Now, this celery, I guess, would be two... Depends on how many you're going to feed. I made, uh, I boiled six potatoes about this size. This size. You can see that. Yeah. Potatoes were about this size. Six of them. Now that's going to feed five or six people. Um, with that, probably two small ribs of celery goes in next. I'm going to put all that in there. Hope it isn't too much. Carrots. Now you can slice your carrots if you like, but I grate mine. I've always grated my carrots. And I use those little ones about this long that, you know, they, they call them baby carrots, but they're bigger than the baby carrot. They're the large ones. And I used about four of them. I grated them. You can see what I've got here. That goes in. This looks like e it's easy, doesn't it? Because everything's already prepared. And nobody likes potato salad better than I do. And it just works when nothing else will. Now, how well you like green pepper depends on how much you put in your potato salad. That's the one thing I use green pepper for is potato salad. Very few uh, times will I use green pepper unless it's in a regular um, green salad. I put a few pieces in with that. This, I may have more than I need. I'm gonna test it and see. I think I can use it all. We'll take that. Now, onion. I know some people make their potato salad with a lot of onion and eggs. My onion, ordinarily I would probably use a purple onion, but I didn't have purple onion, so this is just the yellow onion. I used two thin slices of onion. No more, no more. I don't want any more onion than that. So I cut these in small pieces. Get those ready. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not. Getting my onion ready. it in there and I'll finish up the rest. Yeah, watch me whip these onion pieces. Hope I don't take the end of my finger. I almost did it not long ago. This little forefinger almost ended up with no button, no fingernail. But I'm being careful. I got one of these little knives at home goods. I'm always looking for a real sharp knife. I watch those cooking shows and they just whip that knife like this 
and it'll cut meat, it'll cut anything. I do that and it won't get through a quarter inch of anything. So I'm always looking for the perfect chef's knife. They show them on TV. I don't see them like that anywhere. So I bought this one thinking, oh, this looks like the one that'll do it. Well, let me show the others I've got. Now I have one that, that broke in half, just fell on the floor. Here's my big sharp knife with the point. I like that one because you can do that, you know. You go back and forth like that. That way you don't get your fingers under the knife. This looks more like a, you know, that kind of knife. So, I go back and forth with my different knives. Those are my three big ones. I thought you'd like to see the kind I use. Then the other knives I use, these are, I think, called, uh, you've always heard of the old Chicago knives being the best. I've had these knives at least 35 years. See what they look like? I never could use a big butcher knife like my mother did. She cut everything with that great big butcher knife. Well, I knew I'd cut my arm off if I used that. So, my sister bought me this little knife in Oak Ridge, Tennessee one time. They were having a sale on them at Watson's. Watson's was a discount store. I've been using this little knife ever since. Now these are the two knives I swore by all these years until I went out and bought four different chef knives. One's about the same as the other, just a different shape for me. I don't take a chance on uh, cutting my fingers off. I've had something here I wanted to show you if I can find it. This drawer is a junk drawer. No question about it. Well, I don't guess I'm going to find it. It's a little gadget that you uh, put on your fingers. Well, folks, my neighbor saw my utensil drawer and I thought she was going to fall on the floor. Here's what I'm looking for. I never have figured out how to use it. You see this little thing? It looks like something you do put in your mouth, doesn't it? Mm, well, that's not what it is. You put your... How does that work now? Stick your fingers in there somewhere. And you hold whatever and you whack with the knife. Like this. You go Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, you know what I'm trying to show you. You keep moving it back and forth over the vegetable says a stick of celery. And you don't cut your fingers. Well, so much for that, it never did work for me. Go back in the drawer. And then when somebody's try, trying to set up housekeeping, some young couple, I drag out all of these utensils I bought that don't work for me and I give them to them as a gift. You know, I bet you've done the same thing too. I mean, she, so, okay, let's get back to my potato salad. I'm checking my eggs. I want to make sure they're done. I'm going to let them boil a little faster and that way I can take them off the stove and cool them. I'll show you how I peel my eggs. And I'm sure it won't be a secret to you. Okay, so far, this is what you're seeing in my big pot. It's okay, nice and colorful. Let's go next with... Well, let's see, it's done. We need the pickles. Yeah, I've got to get the pickles. Let's see, I don't want them very big. Get these little ones. See these little bitty ones? I'll use about three of them. These are tiny ones. Might even have to use four. So, 
and I cut them small, them block, big chunks. As I said, cut my pickles just right. Yeah, there we go. There's one. Then we'll try another one. You got my little Chicago knife works. It's always been a handy dandy. One more little pickle. I'm gonna try this one. I need to cut the end off. be able to taste that pickle a little bit. Some people add a little bit of the juice. I don't usually do that because I don't want um, I don't want my potato salad to get that soupy texture. That won't work. Alright, there's three little ones. Let me see if that's enough. I'm going to do one more. I think it needs a little more pickle. And the pickle all depends on your personal taste. And I've got enough potato salad here that uh, I can use extra pickle. This is a nice way to make potato salad. Doesn't take all day. Prepare each vegetable first. Have them handy in the refrigerator, and when your potatoes are done, you're ready to put it all together. Now there goes my my pickles. All right, I need a little salt. Oh, that thing is salt coming out of that. Need to wipe my hands off. They're sticky. to sprinkle, shake my mustard. This is plain French's mustard, plain old mustard. The kind you put on hot dogs. And speaking of hot dogs, I make good hot dogs with chili. Now you can see I'm just dribbling about a teaspoonful of mustard. I don't want it to taste like mustard. This is not going to be mustard potato salad, as some people call. You go to the grocery, and in their deli, they'll have four kinds of chicken salad, four or five kinds of potato salad. They've got grandma's, and they've got Kentucky Fried and who knows what else. Anyway, I want to get my mayonnaise out. I'll go ahead and do that while, while the eggs continue to boil. And then I'm going to take them off and cool them down a little bit with water. All right. You see why? I have a lot of mayonnaise on hand. This one happens to be Hellman's. I can't tell any difference. If you if you set them down, Dukes and Kroger and Hellman's, Kraft, JFG, you set them in a row, I couldn't tell you one from the other. Never have been able to do that. But now you can see I'm putting a lot of mayonnaise in this. I don't want to overdo it yet. So I'm going to set that aside in case I need more. I'll show you what I've got so far. You see how much mayonnaise? That looks like a lot of mayonnaise. But you're going to find out that these potatoes are going to absorb it.
then I make chicken salad, tuna salad. I use a lot of mayonnaise. Just about anything I put together will have a touch of mayonnaise in it. I'm not a salad dressing person. Some people think potato salad has to be made with salad dressing. I've never liked it with salad dressing. I've never been fond of salad dressing. So I'm just one of those crazy people that picky picky. Get this stuff put together. It'll be pretty, you'll see. And hopefully it'll taste good. I like it when it just room temperature before you put it in the refrigerator. I think it tastes best then. Now, here's what you see. And get up close. That's what the potato salad looks like so far. I'm going to take the eggs off the burner. I decided this amount would take about four large eggs. Now I've got to cool these down first. This won't take long. The water is not real cold, so it's kind of hard to do. to let it set a couple minutes so that I can handle the eggs. I'm just going to let the water run over those. That's what I was trying to say. I told you when you get 86, these things happen. You can't think of anything. Unless it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you wake up and dispose all. That's what I was trying to remember. That's how it works. None of you are as old as I am. Now, look at here. I've got... Four eggs in this pan. Now put your fingers in your ears for this. Watch what I'm going to do. And you've probably seen this done. Doesn't have any water in it. Takes a couple minutes to get the shells broken. shells are breaking up. Now let me take wine. I'm just going to use wine. Hope I don't just drop it in the floor. I want you to see how this peels off. Just as easy as can be. And I don't know if it has makes a difference how old your eggs are. Because I never really keep track of how old my eggs are. I'm going to run a little more cold water over these. I think they need to be cooled a little more. Now run the water off. Okay. Here we go. Take a look at what happened to this egg. There you go. There's one. 
Now, here's the next one. Watch how that peeling comes off. I can't see it on my hand. There's your next egg. Egg number three. Let's see, it doesn't want to come. There we go. You just got to get under the edge of it. It just slides right off. This one doesn't want to do it as easy as the other two did, but it'll come off. There we go. There we go. Egg number three, and here's number four. Let's see. Just push that shell off, pretty as you please. I just love this method of peeling the eggs. It doesn't tear up your egg at all. It keeps it. Now, now I'm going to uh, run water off over them so that they uh, don't have any shell on them. Okay, there are the eggs ready. You can use a knife, cut yours up with your hand, if you like. I use my little grater, you can see which side I use. And this is what I do. I hope, well, let's see, it's not gonna show you too well. I'm gonna have to turn my camera a little. There we go. All right. See if I can do it so you can see it. All right, I'm just going to grate my egg down the grater. And that evens up the egg in your potato salad makes it all the same size. Is egg number one, egg number two. I can't wait to eat this. And you know, it, it, it's so good with a good hamburger. The third one, I'm gonna use all four of them in the potato salad. I'm not gonna save any. Well, I might take the fourth one and put it on top. That kind of decorates it a little in case you got company coming. And you always want things to look pretty and edible. I'm just lucky to get them edible. Ooh. There. Three eggs. Okay. Take a look. Real good look. There's the eggs on top. Now all I have to do is mix that up. I don't want to stir too much because if the potatoes are soft, they might break up. And I don't, I like to keep my potatoes in pieces, little pieces, you know, by size. I don't want them to be mushy. So, we are ready for you to sample my potato salad. Now, I've got to see if I need, if I need uh, salt. I don't usually use pepper, but sometimes, you know, just need that extra something. I'm going to try it. A little more salt. And I'm going to put a little pepper. Not much. Mm. One more spoonful. 
of mayonnaise. think of for looked anything. I'm getting to where I don't make things often enough to remember what all goes in them. I have to grab out my cookbook, the one that I wrote, and hope the recipe is in that cookbook. Now, here we go. Put this little egg aside. This aside, and I'm gonna fix you a pretty dish. You're gonna like this. I hope I don't make a mess. I've had this big bowl for years. It works wonderful when I'm making trifle, and I think. Half of making trifle good is making it pretty. You know what I'm talking about when I say trifle. It's your pound cake, your vanilla pudding, your, uh, gosh, come on, tell me I'm not forgetting. Oh, let's see, you've got strawberries. Sometimes I use frozen strawberries, sometimes I sweeten my own strawberries. And then you put your cool whip on top. And you've got layered vanilla, white, red. It makes a beautiful dish for holidays and everybody loves it as a dessert. Now, this really could use more potato salad and that cook bowl pretty big. And if you were making say seven or eight potatoes instead of six, it would fill the bowl all the way to the top. Are you liking it so far? Well, I'm going to be ready to eat it. And I've got to find me something to eat with it. I want to tell you what I did with my sausage balls. They didn't have enough Bisquick in them. They ended up more like sausage balls without this week. I got this can of uh, present dinner roll. I got this sheet kind, you know, one big square sheet. I cut that sheet in uh, little squares about this big, little squares. And I put a sausage ball that had already been baked I put a sausage ball in the center of each square and folded it over like you do tarts and things. And I put those in the oven. I let them bake until the crescent dinner roll was uh, light brown, done, and pinched around the side so so the the sausage was just covered. I took those out and I ate them that way. And you know, they were almost as good as they would have been if I'd had more biscuit. That's how I remedied that situation. So I'm still eating sausage balls wrapped in crescent dinner rolls. Get my little pot holder out of the floor. This is a little pot holder my older sister gave me. And the, this was made on one of those little looms that kids used to make. And <clears throat> she had three of them. I think she bought them from school kids. Okay. Here's my... Where's my spoon? What did I do with it? Well, I'll use fork. Get the rest of this potato salad off the spoon. Okay, I'm 
I'm going to just move that a little bit on the top. Run it around so it evens it out. And you know what? I've got one of those little egg slicers somewhere. Well, obviously, the little egg slicer is not interested in being used today. So I'll just use an eye. This over to one side. Now let's get this egg out. And I'm going to slice it nice and neat. around the side a little bit, adding a little bit more of the egg white. Now, bring my camera right over here and hope I don't drop it in the floor. And I want you to see this pretty dish. See this sides of it, you can see the potato salad. And there on top are my eggs. You try this recipe. I think you'll like it. But like I said, be sure and use the red potatoes and peel them first. In the early days, you boiled your potatoes with the peeling on. Oh, what a pain that was, having to peel that peeling off of every one of those hot potatoes. Gave that up a long time ago. Now, I'm going to show you something. Oh, I forgot to take my clock down. You know, my clock ticks where you can hear it. But with hearing aids, I don't notice it. Jan keeps telling me, Mom, when you're in the kitchen, take the clock down so people don't have to listen to it tick. I forgot, so bear with me. Now, I'm going to take this camera carefully as it is. You get to look at me a little bit. I've got something I want to show you. I like to have things to show you. Now, this is something I did yesterday. I've got to get it set just right so you can get a good look. Now, let's see if that is. Yeah, I think that's about right. Can you see it? That's my fall decoration on the table. Ah, uh, here we go. Woo. Take a better look. Isn't that pretty? See my chicken? A chicken? I've had him about 25 years. No, take that back. Just 20. I better check and see if there's spider webs instead of straw, well, you never can tell the way I clean house. I decided to use my yellow Fiesta Ware. Now, this is the original Fiesta Ware. I've told you before, I don't have any of the new stuff. 
Mine is all back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. See my silverware? Isn't this pretty? Don't you just love this? Ten dollars. Home good. Four place setting. I think it's as nice as pretty as sterling silver. Got my little pumpkins, all different colored pumpkins. And there's something I'll bet you wouldn't notice if I don't call attention to it. I'm gonna move over to the other side. Of course you see you see the frogs. Aren't those cute? Jan gave me those. Well, she didn't really give them to me. I just said, Jan, I want these frogs. And she says, okay, that's how we work. And then again, I've used the big mugs that were popular in the 1930s on a riverboat in Cincinnati. I just got four of those, but I just love them. And here's my chicken that looks kind of like, well, I don't know. It looks like it's malnourished. Not sure. But I think it's a cute. Or maybe it's a she. I think it's, I think it's a she. I like her. I wanted to set her up where you could see her. Now the thing, if you looked at this whole scene, what would be the one thing you might miss? Take a close look, go from side to side, up and down. I'm going to guess it to be the old oil lamp. I just thought this old oil lamp would be perfect. You see, this is what it looks like. I've had it a long time. I don't even remember where I got it. But I also have one that belonged to my mother. And I remember it when I was a little girl. It was what they called a sewing lamp. It was when women got together and they did quilting. And the lamps were set around the quilting frame where they could see to do their stitching. I've got that lamp, which tells you it's older than I am. But these things I love just wouldn't part with. Someone says, what do you, what are you going to do with those things when they're when you're gone? Who's going to want them? I said I don't care who wants them. I don't care what they do with them because I bought them for my pleasure, my pleasure alone. I love to decorate. I love pretty things. I especially love country look. Country look includes the chickens and the oil lamps and see this big basket, this big basket. I bought this big basket. I wish I could tell you the name of the little area. It's right down the road from where Billy Graham lived. You could see the fence line as we turn on the gravel road going down to a little area of shops and I think they were connected to a college, small college there. And I had to buy something. <clears throat> when I go places like that, I want to take something home no matter how little. <coughs> so I saw this great big basket. It doesn't have a handle, it doesn't have feet, it's just a big round basket. That was a long time ago. And sometimes I fill it with dishes. When I fill it with my Fiesta Ware dishes and all those colors, it's gorgeous. Take my word for it, it's gorgeous. You see the tablecloth? That's the tablecloth that uh, was on the front cover of Country Aunt Sims Magazine the year I won the contest. 
This is the tablecloth right here. So, it's one of my favorites, especially because it's all pumpkins and corn. Uh, let's see what all it's got on it. All your fall vegetables. So colorful. And then here's my fiesta teapot. No, this is coffee pot. Sorry. This little picture here, it means something to me because I found it in an estate sale. And on the bottom is engraved a lady's name and the year she made it, which tells me she was taking a ceramic class or else she was just making ceramics. And this is one of the things she made. It's got grapes and fruits. They're hard to tell, but I like it. I think it's such a neat, neat picture. Take a look, close look. See how, na how nice that is. And I thought, how can anybody part with something like that? Well, I want that lady somewhere above. I want her to know I'm taking care of her little picture. I leave the door open back here because you'll see what happens when I close it. get the reflection and when I'm on that side of the table trying to take a picture I'm stuck right in the middle of one of these window frames so in order to get a good picture of the table I have to open the door so that you see the inside and we don't have that glass that's just a little hint to you as to why doesn't she close the cabinet door. That's all I have to show you today. I'm going to Kroger get my Dr. Pepper. I need some sponges. I'm run out of sponges to clean the kitchen sink with. And when I get back, I'm going to see if I can't rummage up something good to eat with my potato salad. And I wish you were here to enjoy it with me. Not using my clicker today. I think I'm going to have to buy a new one. If I can find it. I'll probably have to order it from Amazon. So. I'll let you look at me one more time. And you get to see me up close. Oh gosh. Let's get away from that light. Ew. You know I got a permanent a few weeks ago. I'm still having problems with it. And by the way, do you see this lamp up on the chest? That's one of my small collection. It's not the one my mother had, but it's similar to hers. So, oh my gosh, you know what? I've been on this video too long. Please stick with me. Let me know what you think and tell me if I talk too much. Thank you.